Hi everyone and welcome to episode number six of our ConfigMass 2023. My name is Johan and in this demo I will show you a few tips and tricks on what to do for sequences when you are going production. This is also a follow-up to a question I got from one of the earlier episodes when uh, you learned about error handling. The question was basically, okay, this is cool, but can you just show how to do it in a normal sequence? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. And this means demo time. So once again, this is my config menu server. In this demo, I'm going to create a brand new task sequence, the default template, and then I'm going to spend some time improving it, making it better for production usage. So let's go ahead and create one first. Create a sequence, use an image, give it a clever name, give it a boot image, and always run as high performance plan, recommend doing that. Pick an image, I'm going to pick my Windows 11 image here. I'm going to continue, I'm going to join it to a domain, and I'm going to pick an OU in that domain. And I'm going to specify an account that has permissions to join devices in that domain. Type in the password and go ahead and verify that I typed it somewhat correctly. That looks good. No additional settings needed, no software updates, no applications right now. But at this point, I have a very, very basic task sequence. The first thing I want to do is to implement the error handling I demonstrated in um, one of the earlier modules here or sessions on config mass. So I'm going to have and create a top group. I'm going to call it task sequence. And in, on this group, I'm going to set a condition to continue on error. And then I'm going to move these other groups, the default groups, underneath this one. So I will move that one up, I will move that one up, and I will move that one up. Then I'm going to create some uh, error handling in uh, terms of a script that copies some log files. So for this example, I have used the uh, quite common script from um, UI Surveillance. It's called Copy Logs or OSD copy logs, copy OSD logs, so close. Anyhow, you can download the script from here. The only change I have done to this script uh, from the default script, I will show you. So I put it in a package. I have that package here, sources, OSD, OSD scripts. I have modified it to use this username and password. The script by default is using the network access account and I do not recommend using the network access account. It's uh, considered to be a security risk in Config Manager. So better to use a different username and password. But that's the only change I've done to the script. Now, if I go back to my sequence here, I need to create two groups. One for um, happiness, meaning everything worked perfectly fine. And one for um, not so happy, so sad, meaning something failed. Now, what I need to add to these groups are some variables. And as you learned when we or when I demonstrated error handling the other day, that particular variable is this one here. Last action succeeded or succeeded. If I put that one in as a condition on happiness, I'm just going to cancel this one here, go back here. I'm going to add that one in. This one is obviously going to be true. And then in my so sad group, 
I'm going to add it and set it to false. Now I need to have some variables for that script. And a very easy way to do that is to um, uh, use this one here, dynamic variables. So I can add in a custom variable named SL share. Might remember from the script, that's the one that holds the location to the logs directory I want to use. So on my server, I have that folder. Currently looks like this. But if I look in the file system, I have made sure that an account named cm underscore OSD has modified permissions to it. So anyhow, I specify the share. I will specify the username. And the username was this variable. And I'm gonna set it to cm underscore OSD. And then I'm gonna add in the password. And the password variable was log copy password. This value I'm not gonna show. So I have to type it in twice. And you're also not going to show in the sequence here. But these are the variables for copy logs. Something like this. And then, of course, I need to run the script. So go ahead and add a run script action. Going to browse to the package where I have that script. And I'm going to put in the script name. And just to make sure I don't type anything wrong, I'm going to paste in the script name and set it to bypass here. So that is taken care of happiness. It will copy the log files if it's happy. So give it a better name. Copy OSD logs. And then I will take and copy these down over to the sadness section because I want to copy also if it fails. But something I also want to do if it fails is to collect the error. So you might remember from our earlier session that you can very easily save that return code or save that error. So I'm going to copy this one over. Paste it about here. And then I'm going to show the error code using a little script that just shows that error code or that value. So I'm going to copy that one over as well. So now I have a sequence that has some native or basic error handling to it. But there are some other things I want to do as well. For example, include better driver handling because the built-in or the default driver action is absolutely worthless. Don't use it, get rid of that one. Create a new group, call it drivers, and add in the solution, for example, from um, MSN Point Manager for Modern Driver Management. I have an example here. Let's see, I did one. This one will do just fine. Very similar, a group that sets some variables or an action that sets some variables. And in this case, a script that I have in a package that applies the right driver package depending on what model it is. If you're interested in learning how to do this setup for drivers end to end, last year on um, ConfigMess, I spent about, I forgot how long it was, but if you search for Modern Driver, it was episode number 12, where I walk you through end to end on how to set up driver management this way. So, so that's how we take care of drivers. And finally, I will make the sequence a little more resilient. So this variable here, for example, We'll change the dialog timeout from the default 15 minutes over to 24 hours. My thinking here is that if an error is, I did not mean to paste it there. 
if an error is severe enough to break a sequence, I want to know about it. And a default timeout of just 15 minutes, it's a little bit too short. I can add in some retry variables to force the sequence to retry downloads or retry packages and applications. I can add in variables for retry and a delay in between the different retries. And then this one here that forces the machine to do a reboot when the sequence have actually ended. And this is quite elegant if you want to force, for example, a group policy update. But I'm going to paste that one in here. So by this, I have made some basic changes into a production sequence. Some error handling, some better driver management, and some variables. Now, I'm going to introduce an error. So we can see that this actually works. So once again, I'm going to run a script that does not exist. And I'm going to go ahead and deploy this sequence. So prod number two. That was not deployment, was it? That was edit. Deploy. All unknown computers. Only media and pixie. This is fine. And now I have a deployment. So now I can go to one of my clients. Test number four. I'm going to go to a clean snapshot. And I'm going to mount it on a different boot media. So starting up the virtual machine. I'm going to pick my prod2 sequence that I just created. I'm going to give it the computer name, test04. If I can spell test. It's going to format the hard drive and then reach the point where it tries to run a script that does not work. And that means it should fail. It failed, it's now trying to copy the log files, and now it's supposed to show the error code to me. And here we are. It failed that error code, and it will restart in 24 hours. If I go back to my site server, go to my logs folder, I now have a zip file containing the log files from that client. This was all for part one of improving your task sequence for production usage. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.